Welcome everybody to another episode of Top to Bottom. In today's video, we are going to be looking at the new Lil Uzi Vert album, Love vs. the World 2. My last video was me reviewing Eternal A Take, but I specifically said in that video that I was going to make a separate review for Love vs. the World 2, and that at the end of the video, I was going to give you guys my overall opinions and my score of just this album by itself, and then the whole collective thing. Unfortunately though, I'm going to be saying the same thing as my last video where I was reviewing Eternal Take. I'm probably going to be going through these songs very quickly because there is not much to talk about when it comes to Lil Luzi's music. So we're going to be going through them relatively quickly and uh, yeah, uh, I can't exactly say that I love this project, but you guys will see towards the end. There are 14 songs on Love vs. the World 2, so let's get into it. In the number 14 spot, we have Moon Relate. In my opinion, this is the worst song in the album. It's just super forgettable, with Uzi doing the exact same thing that he's been doing on both of these albums. Even just the beat itself isn't interesting in the slightest, and overall, I actually find it a very annoying song. In the number 13 spot, we have Leader. Nav is actually featured on this song, and he is just as robotic and emotionless as he always is. He actually turns out to be probably the worst feature on the whole album. Uzi matches that as well as, in my opinion, he is pretty boring on this song. And that's really fitting, considering that the beat is just as uninteresting. In my opinion, this is a very poor closer to the album. In the number 12 spot, we have What's Up. This is another filler track. It has an extremely boring hook, beat, and flow from Uzi, and I'm sad to say that I can't really say anything about Future's verse either. It just isn't anything special. It's just your typical Future just auto crooning over the beat. In the number 11 spot, we have Lotus. This is the song that comes after Myron, and it is way more forgettable and mediocre than the intro to this album. I don't like the way Uzi is just mumbling his way through this song in a very draining way. And to speak on the beat, it is generic as hell. In the 10th spot, we have I Can Show You. The only real standout quality I can hear in this track is the beat. It is at least interesting. But in the end, when we actually try to pull some substance from this song, there's not really much there. It just poses as another filler track. In the number nine spot, we have Come This Way. The beat on this song is way more stripped back and not nearly as hard as a lot of other tracks on this album, but I actually consider that a good thing. It did sound promising in the beginning as I thought that this song was gonna be a lot more emotional in tone, sort of similar to, uh, what was that song? I'm Sorry on Eternal A Take. But unfortunately, it wasn't. I just found this song to be as redundant as the other ones on this album. In the number eight spot, we have Got the Guap. The instrumental on the song is nice to listen to, but again, it is so basic and I feel like I've heard it a million times. Uzi is just riffing over this one. Young Thug sounds very similar to Uzi, but I wouldn't really consider that a compliment. In the number seven spot, we have Money Spread. The spacey sound effects placed behind the beat on this song are super weird, but in a good way, as I feel it adds a lot of flavor to the instrumental in a way that a lot of other songs just were really lacking. The lyrics are really stupid, and the same thing I said in my Eternal Take review. In conclusion, Uzi is a rapist. Young Nudie is okay, but isn't exactly a standout feature on the project, as in my opinion, he just kind of sounds like a future ripoff. In the number six spot, we have Trap This Way. Uzi singing is the first thing I noticed that I liked about this song. When the trap beat makes its entrance, it is, again, very bland and lacking any flavor whatsoever. This song just suffers from being boring. In the number five spot, we have Strawberry. While the beat on this song isn't anything new for the project, it does go pretty hard. Young Thug takes the first verse and is just meh. The chorus on this song is terrible, with the title just being repeated over and over again. Gunna's verse is okay, and I can say the same thing for Uzi's. Overall, you kind of have to ignore the lyrics to enjoy this song, because like a lot of the rest of this project, the lyrics are just garbage. In the number four spot, we have Bean. The beat on this song is actually quite nice. It reminds me a lot of something that Lil Yachty would rap over. I'm still not a fan of Uzi's delivery, as I find it to be really mumbly and lazy. Chief Keef's verse is okay. I just find the song to be another generic hype trap song. In the number three spot, we have the intro to the album, Myron. When I put this song on, it already sounded a little better than Eternal Take. It sounded more upbeat in terms of the instrumental, but the lyrics are still 
really fucking stupid. It's not the worst track in the world, it is catchy at times, and I can appreciate the different vocal inflections that Uzi's voice goes into. In the number two spot, we have Yeserski. 21's verse on this track is greatly complemented by his cold delivery and makes for one of the best features on the project. Uzi's delivery is one of the best on the project as well, as he doesn't sound annoying. This song overall just goes really hard, as I just really love 21 Savage on it, and... I would actually say it's not a bad song at all. And finally, in the number one spot, we have No Auto. This, in my opinion, is the best song on the album. Lil Durk's aggressive tone makes him the best feature on the album, and he just fucking kills it. In my opinion, Uzi actually has some of his best rapping ever on this song, with him sounding very confident, and I really like how in your face he is with certain lines. For example, Oh, you scared, huh? The beat isn't anything special, but overall, I do think this song is pretty great. So guys, that has been Love vs. The World 2, and as you can tell, I didn't really like this one either. I was really optimistic, I was hoping that this was going to be better than Eternal Take, and in some respects, it is. In my opinion, this is ever so slightly better than Eternal Take. In my opinion, the first reason for that is because Love vs. The World 2 isn't as long as Eternal Take. Eternal Take was a bad album, in my opinion, but it just went on for so long. And in my opinion, if you have a bad album, having it be really long just makes it a lot worse. And I think Love vs. The World 2 is slightly better because it doesn't go on for as long as Eternal Take. There are some differences with this album, though. I will say that one of the things that I noticed is that there weren't nearly as many just straight up god awful songs. There weren't as many 0 out of 10s that I gave to tracks. In fact, the only 0 out of 10 I gave was to Moon Relate. But on the other side of that coin, there aren't nearly as many really good songs that I like. Yes, there were less excruciatingly bad moments, but in my opinion, Eternal A Take takes the crown for having more good songs. I liked No Auto just about as much as I liked the good songs on Eternal It Take, but the only other song that I would consider even okay is Yeserski, and the only reason I like that song is because of 21 Savage's really cold delivery. I feel like he really makes that track. So when you look at Eternal It Take, I really liked three songs on that, while on this album, when we're talking about songs that I would actually go back to, I would go back to No Auto and maybe Yeserski if I just wanted to hear some 21 Savage. But as I said, there aren't as many just flat out worthless songs on this album. Moon Relate, in my opinion, was just a completely terrible song. Uh, there are a lot of terrible songs, but that one's the worst, while on Eternal Take, there were like four songs that I thought were just unbearable, just completely useless. So I feel like those qualities on the two albums sort of cancel each other out and we go back to the only reason I think this is slightly better is because it doesn't go on for as long. I'm disappointed because the first time I listened to this, I actually thought maybe I like this, but then when I actually sat down and focused on the music at hand, really trying to nitpick at it, I can't say that I'm really impressed. I don't really like this that much. Yes, it's better than Eternal Take, and I guess that's saying something, but it is by no means something that I would return to. I am definitely not going to be returning to these two albums. So when it comes down to scoring Love versus The World 2, I have to give this a 3.5. Only a point higher than Eternal Take because, as I said, I think it's only slightly better just because of its length. Eternal Take went on for one hour and two minutes. This album went on for the rest of the 43 minutes. One last thing I want to do is rank this whole thing overall. And if you take 3.5 plus 2.5 for what I gave to Eternal Take, you end up getting 6. And 6 out of 20 ends up being a 3 out of 10. So I liked Love vs. The World 2 a little bit more, I would listen to it by itself rather than listening to the whole project. But if we were to combine the two, it narrows down to a 3 out of 10. This was pretty difficult to get through. I did not enjoy these two albums at all. Thought they were pretty terrible. And uh, I can only hope that Lil Uzi makes better music in the future. But I think as an artist, he needs to try and do something different. I think he needs to try and grow as an artist because he's really stuck in this 2016 sound that he hasn't evolved out of at all. He's just making the same music that his fans will like for sure, but 
for people like myself who want to get into his music, there is no growth as an artist there. And that's why I don't like Lil Uzi's music. That's all I have to say about this album. I'm going to wrap this video up here. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you smack the like button. If you want to stay up to date with my content, please be sure to subscribe and ring the bell so that you're notified of when my videos go up. I'll have my last video in the corner. If you haven't checked that out already, definitely make sure to check it out. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks very much for watching. Peace out.